Hey guys, it's Mihal here and today I'm going to be teaching you how to budget at university and how you can save money as a uni student. Now me personally, I've not always been the greatest with saving money. However, I've not truly ever driven myself into proper debt. Sometimes I've been a bit low on money, but I've been getting by and we're almost at the end of the first term at university and whilst my finances could be better, there are a few things that I've been doing to keep them going well because they are still in good shape. And I'm going to be teaching you my personal tips on how you can save money as a uni student or even just in general. If, uh, if you're in sick form, these tips can also apply to you uh, in some scenarios. However, this video is mainly for saving money at university. So my first piece of advice is obvious. Get a job. Because obviously, if you're going to be at university, you're going to be spending f or money on things like clothes, bus, transport in general, food, etc. So your money's only going to go down uh, from what you get for your student loan or whatever your parents give you. However, if you have money coming in from a job, then you will run, you have more money available and so you are able to have a bit more flexibility on spending, meaning that your finances are in tip top shape. Even if it isn't a proper job, even if it's a casual job, for example, you do hours here and there, it's still money and well, again, Having a job will allow you to spend a bit more freely and you won't have to worry as much. I personally have two jobs and they're not set shift hours, they're more zero hour. However, I can take on a shift for something and if I want to do something then I'll do it and I'll get paid. So let's say I do need money, I can literally sign up to do a task that is being advertised for one of these two jobs and then I'll get paid for it. But because it's zero hours, there's no commitment towards those jobs. So let's say I'm busy, or I really don't want to work. I don't have to. So as a student, I'd advise zero hour uh, contract job if literally all you need is a bit of extra cash but nothing serious because it means that you can earn money whenever you want to and it's just something to have alongside your studies. The next one is a big one. When you go clubbing, because most people go clubbing, let's face it, try and go for free entry. So for example, in Nottingham, at Inc on a Friday and a Saturday there's a guest list where if you go before I think it's 11.30 not only will you get free entry but you'll also get a free drink versus paying I think it's five pounds for a ticket and if you did that every single week let's say you went out every single Friday or Saturday and you're going to ink and I think Prism do it as well though I'm not sure you'd be saving five pounds every single week and it adds up and that is quite a lot of money. Not only that, you're getting a free drink as well and that's money that you don't have to spend on a drink later on. And speaking of drinks, for those of you who do drink, uh, what my flatmates do is they do pre's quite hard. So they'll buy a bottle of vodka or whatever from Lidl or Audi, budget options, and then they'll pre-drink quite hard Bef just before they go into the club so that when they're in the club it kicks in so they, they get past the bouncers because they're kind of sober when they see the bouncers but once they're in the club it kicks in it hits them and then they only need to top up with one or two drinks inside the club uh, to keep them feeling uh, buzzed and well that is quite a cheap way of doing it because if you think about it a bottle of vodka uh, let's say 70 cent litre is about 10 pounds uh, if you drink half of that your chances are that you'll probably only need one drink in the club. So let's say five pounds for that half uh, bottle of vodka plus one drink in the club, which is probably about three quid if you think of a well, if you go, it depends on the day you go, but let's say you went on a Tuesday, which at Prism, three quid for a double vodka and mixer, then that's eight pounds on drinks versus other nights where people, if they're just buying drinks in the club on and on and on, they can spend at least 20 to 30 quid or even more. I know people who spent 80 pounds in one night just on drinks, which is just ridiculous because you got to think to yourself, is it worth it? Because that money you spend on drinks, there's an opportunity cost and that opportunity cost is being, not being able to spend that money on something else. Whereas if you do it like how my flatmates do it, where uh, obviously they, let's say they go before 11.30 and then they also do pre quite hard not, and then they get that free drink. They, they actually have quite a cheap night out and they're still getting the night out. They don't have to reduce the amount they club. It's literally just doing a few extra things to make your night so much cheaper. Something I personally do, and I'm not, my flatmates don't really do this, but I do it, uh, is so in Nottingham you can get a bus 
uh, until I think it's like 11.30 on a normal weekday. So let's say I went out on a Tuesday or a Thursday, what I would do is I'd get a bus into the city centre for £1.10. Um, you just say you're under 19, it works. And then to get back, I'll get an Uber. So because what's the point of spending £45 on an Uber to get into the city centre when you can go to the exact same place on a bus for £1.10? And again, the more you go out, the more it adds up. So every single time you're saving £3, £3, £3, £3, and then eventually that money adds up. So not only are you saving £3 on that uh, transport, if you do pre's hard, if you're someone that drinks and you do pre's hard, then you're also saving money from that. So add, combine the two and literally just keep like a weekly running of how much money you're saving and you'll see the difference. And it's just ridiculous how much money you can save just by doing simple things. My third tip is to try to eat out less and this is something I need to follow. But um, I've been doing it recently. What I've actually been doing is I've still kind of been eating out but I'm gonna, in my next tip, I'll explain what I've actually been doing myself. But let's say you really do want a takeaway. Let's say you want a pizza or you want Chinese. Instead of going to a Chinese takeaway or instead of going Domino's, try to get something ready made. Um, even if you want something fresh, go to Asda or Sainsbury's where they'll create a pizza for you for much cheaper. And honestly, not only are you still getting a feel of takeaway, so it's something different, but it's much cheaper than simply going to Domino's or a Chinese takeaway. And chances are that it'll be a slightly healthier as well, although not too much. But again, every little bit adds up. So as I said my, uh, in the last tip, I've kind of been eating out a lot recently. However, what I've been doing is looking in the reduced price section in supermarkets. So what you should do is instead of doing your food shop, at let's say 12 o'clock in the afternoon uh, let's say Sainsbury's closes at 10 o'clock do your food shop from around 6 to 7 because at this point this is when uh, items go uh, on to reduce price and like literally just get put on and so everything will be available and so there will be so many things that you can just choose from back at home in Sainsbury's of Crayford if I got 5 o'clock I can get fish and chips from Sainsbury's at reduced price for £1.50 which is crazy because if you went out and bought fish and chips it cost £5.50 but in Sainsbury's you can get it for £1.50 so that's £4 saving just there and they do it quite regularly as well so let's say you wanted fish and chips all the time you'd be saving £4 every single time and really easy like I said just an easy way to save money so instead of doing your food shop at 12 do it in the evening, a few hours before closing time. I don't know about you, but I like to buy a lot of clothes. Um, it's not something that I used to like doing, because, simply because I wasn't into fashion. But as I've grown up, I've started to get a bit more into fashion and just uh, dressing well. I'm in a full track suit with Air Forces, whereas a few years ago, I'd literally just be wearing a plain t-shirt from Primark, some really crappy joggers and some really crappy uh, trainers. But anyways, if you do like fashion and you like to shop for clothes, only buy your clothes during sale periods. Now, I don't mean these crappy, oh, up to 50% off sale, ends tomorrow, those ones. I mean ASOS, okay, <laughs> this isn't sponsored by ASOS, although if you're watching this ASOS, please send me free clothes. I really love your website. Um, ASOS usually have 10% student discount. And this student discount usually excludes sale. However, because it's Black Friday weekend from when I'm filming this, they're doing 20% off everything, including sale. And it's not only Black Friday that they do this. It's literally, once every like two to three months, I do see them doing 20% off everything. And during these periods, this is when you should bulk buy your clothes. Now, I know you, sometimes you might be thinking, oh, I just want that t-shirt like one day you just randomly think to yourself I just want that t-shirt but if you try to avoid doing that and literally only look for your clothes during this 20% uh, off everything sale on ASOS because ASOS sells multiple brands both designer and non-designer then you're gonna save quite a lot of money because for example if like I said Black Friday so this weekend this is on Nike Nike um, 
there's a coat worth £120. I managed to get it for £58. So it's a really nice puffer jacket, which is worth £120, £120 and I got it for £58. And if that's not a bargain, then I don't know what is. But I refrained from buying a coat all this time. And now, finally, during the sale period, I've managed to pick up a bargain and save myself £62, which is more than what I actually paid for the coat. So my saving was greater than the uh, price I actually paid. Going to extremes, if you really can't manage your money, let's say you're in a club and you really love to tap with your phone or your card because you've got contact lists, then what you should do is withdraw a certain amount of cash every single week and ban yourself from using your card and literally stick to that cash only. So what this you're essentially doing is budgeting because you're allocating a certain amount of money uh, to yourself to spend each week and so you're only allowed to use that cash because once you run out you're not allowed to use anything else and by doing this you're uh, keeping to a strict um, allowance but also you're making sure that you are able to live for the week so this can actually help you save money because let's say you have contact lists you'll be like oh yeah buy this I'll buy that I'll buy this I'll buy that and then let's say you allocate yourself a budget of £30 per week, uh, that's just a random number, uh, versus saying buy this, buy that. Well, for example, today I spent £8 already, and let's times that by seven, uh, that is £56, if my maths is right. Um, <laughs> but that's again, like I said, so let's say I was spending £8 every single day, £56 uh, if my maths is correct, versus 30 I'm already spending more. Uh, just because I haven't allocated myself a budget and I'm just like, yeah, I'll buy it, I'll pay that. Relating to that, create a cash inflow versus outflow diagram. So this is called a cash cash flow, cash flow forecast. Um, so you, if you did A-level business, you might know what this is. If you also did a diploma in financial studies, you also know what this is. So literally, just create a list of what you're spending and what you spend it on, as well as how much money you're earning and then you can also um, categorize your spendings into different uh, categories such as like essential, non-essential and uh, whatnot. and really this, what this will help you do is you'll get a total of how much you're spending, you'll get a total of how much you're earning and you can see whether you have a positive or negative cash flow. Lastly but not le uh, least of this exhaustive list is to ask for a student discount everywhere and I mean everywhere so let's say you're going to Las Iguanas which is a restaurant and it's quite a popular one it's quite uh, suave like it's on the upper price and and you're thinking hmm this is quite a nice place I doubt they do student discount let me tell you they do 25% student discount if you have just a normal student card and if you have an NUS uh, totem card they do 40% student discount and I did not think they did, did this until I googled it. My, I was with my brother and he took me to this place and I was like, you know what, I'll just google if they do a student discount. And I saw those uh, figures and I was like, wow. And it just, ever since then, I've been thinking, literally anywhere I go, last, the other day I went to a milkshake place, I was like, do you do a student discount? And they're like, yes we do. Simple as that. And again, savings, 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 it will all add up and this money that you can uh, save, you can either spend it on something else, or you can just save it and keep it there in your bank balance to keep it healthy. That is going to be it for the video guys and girls. I hope you did enjoy it and I hope that it did help you and I hope that you're able to use some of these tips to help budget at university. I know that some of these tips have actually helped me a lot, especially with a free entry before 11.30 or even using a bus instead of Uber to get to a club. But if you did enjoy the video, then make sure to leave a like, comment below, and subscribe. Follow me on social media, so at MihailKhan on Instagram, at MihailX on Twitter, and official MihailKhan on Facebook. I do post stories on Instagram, uh, so if you want to keep up to date with my life, I don't have public Snapchat right now, so Instagram is the place to be, so definitely follow me on there. Let me know what videos you want to see from me in the comments below. I'd like to thank a girl called Darcy for this, this video idea as I was with her the other day when she visited Uni of Nottingham and she literally suggested, oh, you should make a budgeting video. And I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. So thank you, Darcy. And this has been Mihail and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.